lab 07 we are going to do it today the lab is revised from the seed labs and find its uh, official description here and the related uh, materials for example the files that are needed i made a copy and posted on our course companion website so you can find them more materials on this uh, official website and also its description to find the tasks we are going to do. For tasks three, four, five, six, task three, defeating dash count measure, task four, defeating address randomization, Task five and six, turn on stack guard protection and turn on non-executable stack protection, respectively. Okay, let's open the description to see what are the tasks described in three, four, five, six. We have practiced all these preparation and the task one and the task two last week, right? So you should know how to do, how to prepare for the task. Task one, run the share code. Task two, exploiting the vulnerability. And today we are going to do a task three, four, five, six. For task three, defeating dash counter measure. As we have explained before, the dash share in Ubuntu 16.04 jobs privileges when it detects that the effective UID does not equal to the real UID. And this can be availed from the dash program's uh, change log. And we can see an additional check in this uh, in this uh, line one here, which uh, compares real and effective user ID or group IDs. Yeah, this a P flag to limit the uh, box system of your open box inside your ID binaries. The source code are from here. Set UID, UID, set GID, GID. Here, if not equal, this UID not equal, this EUID. And the GO, GID not equal, this effective GID. Then they will be dropped to the real UID and the real GID. The privileges are dropped. The counter measure implemented in the dash can be defeated. And one approach is not to invoke this bin shell in our shell code as we demonstrated. In our last lab, we change this sh to zsh. Instead, we can invoke another shell program, zsh. And this approach requires another shell program, such as zsh to be present in the system. And another approach is change the real user ID or the victim process to zoom before invoking the dash program. In the SH method, maybe the system does not have a ZSH or the patch that is ZSH. So we resort to the second method. to change the real user ID of the victim process to zero before invoking the dash program as we demonstrated during the lecture. So we can achieve this by invoking this set UID zero before executing this exit VE in the shell code. And in this task, we use this uh, approach and we will first change this bin shell symbolic link back to this bin dash 
this is safe version. Then we will see uh, how the kind of magic in Dashbox and how to defeat it using the system called set guid zero and we'll write the following uh, C program. We first comment out line one here and run the program as a set UID program. The owner should be root and describe your observation, which means you you will see dash counter measure come into a becomes effect. And we then uncomment this line one and run the program again. And you should be able to get a root share. And now let's uh, go to our file explorer. I would like to create a lab for lab 07. Since I, all my source code is in lab 06, so I, I will copy all the code from lab 06 to uh, lab 07. So we we'll copy all this source code. Then create a folder lab the server. Paste all the code file here. Now first we want to try this uh, dash share test.c program. Here we have a dash share test test.c. Now we want to open all these files with a sub L. So it's a good idea to close all the files you open up. You open uh, in your previous uh, session because sometimes you may have uh, files with the same name as I dem demonstrated uh, during the lecture. Now we want to uh, open all these uh, C source code files. And drag the job here. This is uh, a dash shell test C. First, we comment out this one to see the effect of dash. We open a terminal window here. Now remember, don't uh, use a terminator for this lab as we encounter a problem during the lecture, right? So the first step we would like to check uh, being SH whether it points to the safe version. Here you see uh, it is, it points to this bin dash. If yours is not point to this uh, bin dash, run this uh, command line. Make sure it point to this uh, bin dash. You can always modify with this uh, ls dash l command. Now I, I want to, I'm going to compare my dash shell test to c. gcc dash shell test to c. I want to do the name. The first one, give it, uh, we will compare it twice, right? We give it a one. Since the one without that set your ID. Okay, now I have uh, dash share yeah, test one. We can run it. Now we see uh, we get a shell. The top ID, you see your, your ID is 1000, G ID is 1000. This is a normal program. The next step, we change it to a set UID program to see whether we, we can uh, get the root share. Let's do search owner. Change the owner of this uh, dash share test one. 
throat and turn it into a surgery program using that as a remote. Use LS dash L to, to verify it. You see uh, it's uh, owned by root and the S bit is a set. So it's a set URD program. Now let's uh, run it again. Here we still get a dollar sign. We check the URD. We still uh, need a seed user 1000, which means is we didn't get the root uh, privilege. This is because the counter measure run into effect in the dash program. So we exit this one. Now, the idea is how do we defeat the counter measure with a dash? We need to, uh, before we run this uh, share program, this dash, we change our UID to zero, which means change our UID to the root UID. Make sure this line, it only works inside your UID program. As a normal program, you cannot change your UID to root. Right, this is uh, reasonable. And now we change our program, set your UID, which means uh, change our UID to root. The root UID is zero. After we get the root UID, then we execute this uh, dash bin share because bin share point to dash, right? Then we get a root share. Okay, now let's uh, compare and run this program. This time we give it another execute file name too. We want to demonstrate uh, first, if it's not a, a set UID program owned by root, you will not be able to uh, get a root share. Even though in your source code, you have a set UID zero, it will not work. Oops, uh, we, we type a two, right? This is dash share two. Here you again you get a, just get the normal uh, share. You cannot get the root share because that said your idea is zero does not work if this program is just a normal program. Now we change it to a root of set set your ID program. So we first do change the owner to root. Then we use search mode, turn it into a set UID program. Verify it, the dash uh, share test is a set UID program owned by root. Next time we run it, dash so you see we get a comment. You can use ID to verify it. See it? Your UID is a change to root. So you get a root share. So this is the way we want to borrow into our share, into our buffer overflow tag. Okay, now let's uh, exit this C program, the share we got. So we complete this part. Now, we want to convert the set UID zero to assembly language is this part. This is four lines assembly language. And I create a pair file. That pair file contains these four lines and these four lines is the set UID. When our vulnerable program stack is a set UID program, then we will be able to set our UID to zero, the router's UID, as we just demonstrated using that C program. Right? 
we update this uh, shell code code add four instructions yeah one two three four they they are just assembly implementation of that uh, set uid zero statements and using this shell code we can attempt the attack on the vulnerable program even though uh bin share is pointed to the safe version dash so we use a bio shell code to modify this exploit.c or exploit.py and try to attack from task two again and see if we can get a root shell so we only use the exploit.py or exploit.py this is easier to read even though we want to implement a C version and a Python version. But you are suggest to just use this uh, Python version is good enough. Okay, in our Python exploit.py, we need to add those uh, four lines. So you didn't see that four lines actually is inside our lab. On our course compiler website, the code, we can download the code. But uh, those code are inside uh, lab 06. You to share the same code. Okay, let's see the exploit.py. I didn't add those four, four lines. So the four lines is I think it's inside the lecture. I will go to the because module zero one buffer overflow in the code buffer overflow and and exploit dot by so we also need all the code from here it's a revised shell code dot by right this is revised uh, Shell code dot by you have these four lines. You can copy them from here, or you just download this one. The code below is the same as the one I showed before. So copy these four lines, come back here, paste here. So these are those are four lines. Uh, please format your code, make the looks good. Okay, now we have these four lines. These four lines is uh, used to implement that uh, set UID zero. Control S, save it. Okay, we need to uh, make sure these uh, this buffer here, these values they are right, so you can use the value from your lab 06. I don't know whether this one is the one uh, as my lab 06, why why I need to still debug to find this uh, this one. We may have a try. So we can generate the bad file. First, you see there's no bad file here. Run Python three exploit dot py. So it generate a bad file for me now. You see that the bad file show up. You can also check the contents of the bad file with a hex editor. Here you see most of the bad file is filled with the not mount 909090. Then you find this uh, return address, it contains this uh, return address. You can see it's offset. It's offset is at uh, 0xfc. So what's the xfc?
you can use uh, IPython to find or use your calculator to convert uh, that uh, 0x FC from hex number to decimal number. That uh, is 252 0x FC. So you, you can reuse those address from your lab 06. So now I want to compare my step dot C, GCC. Because we are redoing uh, lab two, right? So lab two, first we need to turn off those, those counter measures and only leave the counter measure or dash. So we need to turn off the counter measure from the operating system, for example, address randomization. So we need a sudo syscontrol. Dash W is a kernel parameter randomized. With respect equals zero means uh, disable it. Now we was uh, in the compiler GCC. We need to turn on every stack and also turn off those. Uh, stack card provided by the pro compiler protector and the dashboard stack right what about our stack dot c so now we have a normal program stack dot c if we run it we get a segmentation fault. So now we want to uh, turn it into a set UID program. Before we turn it into a set UID program, in lab six, when we run it as a normal program, did we uh, get a shell? First, we need to be able to get a share, right? Otherwise, uh, when we change it to a set ID, we shall not be able to get a share. So we don't make, which means that uh, I need to find uh, all these uh, parameters. And also in my share program, the stack, the buffer size is two for zero. Here, this string size is 517. So these are all the same as a uh, uh, lab six. So for those students, you have a report, you can use the report. Now I, I didn't uh, record anything. So I need to uh, debug it again and find those address and uh, update this. Uh, start address of this buff and this EPP value. So which means I need to uh, generate the program with debug information. So we use this GCC dash G that G that we are provide me a Debug information. I give it a name. DBG debug. I have a program with debug information. Now I can use GDB to debug this program. And we know that a vulnerable function. The vulnerable function is here inside this stack. Dot His name is called uh, BOF. Right? We need to set up a breakpoint at BOF. 
then run the program. Okay, now we need to find those uh, values with the built-in command provided by GDB. Print out that uh, start address of the buffer and uh, the value saved in DP, EBP, saved in EBP. And also here I think these two values are good enough for us. I copy it, go back to uh, exploit.py. Here you see these values are different, right? I see. There's a start address of a buffer, then second address is the address of this EBP. Save it. And quit this uh, debugger. We need to remove that bad file and generate bad file again. Okay, we have a bad file now. First, we need to check whether our stack debug work or not. Here we get a share, which means our power flow attack is good. Then we check that the stack, you see the attack is good. Now we know the attack, they are all good. Then we want to, uh, and also you see that strategy I your ID zero does not work, right? Because these are just a normal uh, program. They don't, they are not a set UID program. We want to see our uh, exploit.py. We want to add those four lines and then set UID zero. But it does not work. So we need to change them to a set UID program. Change the owner to root. Then change its mode to set a UID program. Now we run it. You see, we get the root shell that pound the key. Our UID equals zero. Okay, this is what we got. You see, uh, we succeed the attack and this describe and explain your result. When it's a normal program, what do you got? When it's a cellular program, what do you got? And explain them. This is a task three. Now for task four, defeating address randomization. For a set two bit Linux machines, stacks only have 19 bits of entropy which means the stack base address can have two to the 19 so many possibilities. And this number is not that high and it can be exhausted easily with the brute force approach, which means at most we only need to try so many times. We should be able to attack the one of program with the buffer overflow at the worst case. As the best case, then you just try once and we'll get it. And in this task, we use such an approach to defeat the address randomization counter measure on our third to be the virtual machine. So now we want to turn on those counter measure and defeat them one by one. The first counter measure is address randomization provided by the operating system. So we turn on with this command. Then we use a shell script to call a stack program, vulnerable program again and again, and to see how long you will get it. As we demonstrated in the, during the lecture, within uh, two minutes, I got that uh, shell, 
because it's a random, so you may have a different time to get this root share. And that share program is provided, so it's called, uh, so, in your project, in your lab, that share script of the share script is, uh, is not provided here. So we need to go to our course and website, buffer overflow, defeat uh, dram.sh, we can copy from there, from our lecture. Our lecture is inside here, open a new tab. You can go to the lecture, or you just go to go to uh, course companion website. They are all downloaded here, right? Go to the lectures, module zero one, code, find a buffer overflow. That uh, share script is here. Defeat ram dot sh. So copy this, copy this one. Go back to our lab zero seven. Paste here. And again, open it to the sub L to have a look. Here with the infinite loop, we call this a uh, stack, the one of the program at the end. So as we demonstrated during the lecture, don't use terminator, use this uh, terminal. Right, now you see that uh, defeat drain.sh is there. We have all the tools, stack, this one the program and this bad file, and we just verified it worked. But now we need to turn on the protection provided by the operating system, address randomization. sudo syscontrol w that kernel parameter randomize VA space equals two. So now it's a turn on. Since it's turn on, if you run stack, it's very likely we will not get a, a, root, a root share. Right? We get a segmentation fault. If you are lucky, you maybe you just try once, you will get it. When we run this defeat, because that defeat is uh, not uh, runnable, executable. So we need a CH change mode, plus X to make it uh, executable. Now it's uh, turned green, so we can run it now. It is just uh, a brute force. So you need to share, you get a root share. But the time for different students, you may get a different, different value. Even for myself, I do it here or during the lecture, I will get a different time. Okay, this is a uh, task four. Now let's go back to uh, the lab manual, task five and the task uh, six. For task five, turn on the stack board protection. Before working on this task, remember to turn off the address randomization first because we, every time we only want to try only one condom measure. So when you turn on address uh, randomization first, or you will not know which protection helps achieve the protection. We only want to verify this stack code in task file. Uh, in our previous tasks, we disabled the stack code protection mechanism in GCC when compiling the program. And in this task, you may consider repeating task two in the presence of stack code and to that, 
you should compare the program without this uh, option dash f no stack protector. And for this task, we will recompile the one program stack.c to use the GCC stack code. Leave your bad file there, you know it work. And execute task one again and report your observation. You may report any error messages you observe. Here you see in this GCC version 4.3.3 and above style code is enabled by default. So therefore you have to disable style code using the switch mentioned before, mentioned here. And in the earlier version, it was disabled by def default. So if you use an older GCC version, you may not have to disable style code. But in this seed VM 6.04, the GCC version, you can check it. It's a, it's newer than this one. So style code is in, enabled by default. Here you see within one minute and 59 seconds, I get this uh, root here, which means my attack succeeded. I defeated the address randomization provided by the operating system. You type ID, you find uh, your root, right? You get the root here. So now let's exit this one and come to see to stop this brute force attack. To practice task file, we need to turn off the memory randomization, which means change this one to zero. Okay, we now, now we know the address randomization is uh, turned off. We only need to com we compare our stack program so it's better give it, give it a good name. For example, with this step dot. You have this uh, program leave it there, don't over write them. So GCC, but we need to keep other options, right? Let's the exec stack. We only put off that uh, dash F here, dash F no stack protector. We only want to try this one. So we don't put it here, then we will get it enabled. We can try the GCC version Hello here. You see the file point of four. So it's uh, higher than, than this 4.3.3, uh, which means the stack code is enabled by default. dash and z exec stack without that dash f no uh, stack protector. Then dash o, this time we create a stack with code, with stack code, right? Stack dot c. We compile it like this. Okay, now we run this uh, stack underscore wg. Here's the LS, have a look. You see it's a normal executable program now. We can uh, make a copy. WGS means a uh, stack with God as a side UID program. Then you will have two program. You can make a comparison. But in my demonstration, I would just like to change it to a, going to as a normal program first, then I change it to a static UID program. With God, you will find this uh, stack smashing detected. So which means that static God is enabled. Now I change it to a static UID program owned by root, so sudo change own to root. Then turn it into a set UID program with uh, change mode. You can use LS to verify 
It's a seriority program owned by Root now. When you run it, you still get this one, stack smashing detected, which means that a stack got variable is overwritten by our by our bad file. And uh, it detects that a power flow, it will terminate our program or abort our program. So we cannot do any uh, attack. So this is a task file. Then for task uh, six, we only need to turn all this nine at scalable stack production. So we need to put this dash F no stack protector here. Then we can try it again. Right. With the GCC to compare this program, we only turn off that that's the exit stack. And what you change it to that's the no exit stack. No exit stack. I think by default it's a no exit stack. Yeah, you, uh, we can read this one to see where it's by default is no exit uh, stack. In previous tasks, we intentionally make the stacks executable. And in this task, we do compare our one program using this no exit stack option, then repeat the attack in task two. And can you uh, get a share? If not, what's the problem? And how does this protection scheme make your uh, tax difficult? You should describe your observation and exp explain in your lab report. So we can use the following uh, instruction to turn on the non executable stack protection. <laughs> uh, with GCC, oops, to compare this program, this time we call output bit. Uh, no E means no uh, exit stack. And E. Oops, I missed a dash O. But we need to keep other protections. Keep this uh, uh, no stack. But we, we also need to turn off this. Uh, no stack protector because we only want to turn on only turn on this uh, non executable stack protection only and turn off all other protection. We know that uh, memory randomization is already turned off, right? And we need to specify this that's the no exit stack uh, explicitly, or you may check. The GCC documentation to see whether this one is a uh, turn on by default, just like that. Uh, no stack protector, no exit stack. Okay, now I have a stack NE program, right? We can run it as a normal executable program. You get a segmentation fault. Even though this buffer is overflowed, but they are considered as a data, non executable data. This is a called non executable stack. Your malicious code is inside that stack, but now they are non executable. Even though the buffer is overflowed, we can also change it to a strategy program to have a look. We should have the same result. Change the owner to root. Turn it into a strategy program. 
value for it. You see it's a strategy program owned by root. You draw it again, you get the same problem, segmentation fault, which means the task two, the attack in, in task two, we failed. Here it uh, just uh, makes it impossible to run the shell code on the stack, but it does not prevent buffer overflow attack, which means we still overflow the buffer because there are no other ways to run malicious code after exploiting the buffer overflow vulnerability. So in this way, how could we attack it? We can use this return to lab zero attack if you want to learn more, you can check that uh, return to lab C attack lab and also check his textbook. <laughs>